What's up guys, Collector John here. I'm exploring the Milwaukee area looking for video games and other cool stuff that I want to add to my collection. So come along with me today as we hit up a local game store, a Goodwill, and drive 60 miles to pick up an N64 lot of uh, dubious quality. Well, I think it's time to find some games, so let's hit it. All right, so we're gonna start off with a, a location that I go to a lot um, here in Milwaukee. This is Mega Media Exchange. Um, it's a pretty good store. Like their prices aren't great, but they generally have a decent selection and it's literally a block away from my apartment. So I go there pretty often. And we're gonna start off strong here in the Xbox section. Um, the Xbox is hands down my favorite console to collect for. It was the main console that I had growing up. Uh, so I'm just really nostalgic for a lot of the titles in its library. Um, and there's just like a lot of interesting stuff. Like Sega was putting out a lot of weird Xbox exclusive games that are really cool. Uh, so I think it's just like a really cool underrated console. And looking at Max Payne here, I do want this game, but it's $14, which I think is a little high. So I'm gonna pass on that for now. Um, and I was also looking at Robotech Battle Cry down here. Um, $8 was a pretty sweet price actually, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to get it this time. I, I do really like these kind of mecha combat games like Mech Assault and stuff like that, um, but not getting it today. And then moving on to the Xbox 360. Um, there's a lot of 360 games here. This is a really good console to collect for right now because the games are so cheap. And I was looking at Perfect Dark Zero. I do want this game. $14 is a little high though, so I passed for now. Uh, and then I saw something interesting down here, this game, Infinite Undiscovery. Um, this seems to be a Japanese role-playing game by Square Enix. Um, it looks pretty interesting, and I actually never heard of it, so I was just checking it out. Um, not something that I'm going to pick up this time, but it just seemed pretty cool. And this game, Cameo, I actually really want this game, and $8 was a great price, but the manual was all messed up, so I had to pass on it this time. And moving into the PlayStation 2 section, there were a lot of PS2 games today. Uh, you love to see it. Um, didn't see anything that I was super interested in getting this time, except for this copy of Metal Gear Solid 3, because it's, uh, you know, it's the best game ever made. Um, I already have it, though, so I'm not going to buy another copy. And moving on to the PS3 stuff, I didn't see anything at first that interested me. Um, but as I was looking around, I noticed on the bottom shelf a copy of Persona 4 Arena, and this is a game that I've really been wanting to play for a long time, um, mostly just because I love Persona 4. And $20 wasn't like the best price in the world, but it was in really good shape and complete with manual, so I picked it up. And I didn't see this earlier when I was looking through the PS2 games, but there was a great looking copy of Jack 3 here, which is another game I've been wanting to play, so I grabbed that one too. And I think it's time to get into some Nintendo business. Uh, here's the Wii and Wii U stuff. Deus Ex Human Revolution, a weirdly valuable game on the Wii U. And $40 is actually a really good price, but I don't need to play this on the Wii U. Uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, $18, not bad. Uh, definitely want to play this game at some point, but didn't get it this time. This GameCube selection is uh, making me sad. And now we're getting into glass case territory, the valuable stuff, I guess. Here's a bunch of box Game Boy Advance games. Definitely didn't need any of those. A um, bunch of loose GBA stuff up here. I am interested in playing Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Had that game when I was a kid. Uh, really cool game. Some Game Boy and Game Boy Color stuff here. Not much for me today. Atari Lynx. Uh, nobody's buying those. I wonder why. Bunch of Game Boys. Copy of Zelda. Uh, Spirit Tracks for the DS. And then over in the glass case PS2 games, I couldn't help but ogle that copy of Obscure, which I'd love to own someday, but I also need to eat. And I didn't really find anything else in here that I was interested in, so I think it's time to head to a Goodwill down the street. And this Goodwill they were going to is on the east side of Milwaukee, which is a really vibrant area. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of good restaurants and local businesses and stuff. It's a pretty cool area. And it's also right next to the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And I didn't go to school here, but I bet if I did, I would have been shopping at the Goodwill in this neighborhood all the time. And the student population in this area, I'm sure, is one of the things that makes this probably the busiest Goodwill in the entire state. So starting off in the media section, um, there's about 10 copies of Wii Fit along with this, uh, this game Shadowrun. Um, this is a cool game. I already have it, so I didn't get it. Uh, more copies of Wii Fit, a bunch of shovelware. 
And up here, I saw a copy of Army of Two Platinum Hits Edition for the Xbox 360. And I can't say this is a game that I'm, you know, dying to play, but it was in good condition and complete and $3. So yeah, sure, I picked it up. And while I was looking around, I saw this Ghost Hunters uh, Season 1 DVD set. Um, pretty cool set, and while I am interested in these stupid ghost hunting shows, I, I don't feel like this is a DVD that I need to own. Uh, I can probably just find it online or something if I really want to watch it. The only other interesting thing I saw while looking through the media DVDs and stuff was this uh, Gothic 3 for the PC. Um, I thought the first Gothic game was really cool, but I don't really collect like physical PC games, so I just left that for someone else. Moving on to the electronics and stuff, I found a bunch of crap. Uh, there's nothing good here at all. Uh, did find this ravioli maker though. I think that could be pretty handy. Make some ravioli sheets with it uh, if you're into that. Not me though, I don't need this. In the smaller electronics section, I found this horrible looking uh, generic controller for a PlayStation 2, I think. And then I saw this uh, tape recorder on the bottom shelf um, by a brand called Kobe, which it looks like the Sony font. It's kind of sketch. Um, and also $10 is just way too much for something like this. So I didn't get it, even though I do want a new uh, tape recorder. Looking around in the board game section, uh, I saw something really interesting, this game Dungeon Dice. Um, this is a board game from 1977. I think it's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons Light. That's kind of how it reads to me. Um, it looks really cool, just like the artwork on the box and stuff, and these little cards that it comes with, and it has these like really awesome looking wooden dice too. Um, but I have no idea if it's complete, and I, I don't really have use for something like this, even though I think it's really cool. So I left it. I'm sure there's someone out there who like played this when they were a kid who would really appreciate it. And before I left, I just wanted to look through the CDs really quick, and I found this copy of Mixed Up by The Cure. This is actually a pretty sweet find. It's like a remix compilation of a bunch of Cure songs. I'm for sure going to pop this in the stereo when I get home. It's pretty cool. All right, so that was a fairly successful Goodwill stop. Um, I found that game and a cool CD. Uh, you know, what else could you ask for from a Goodwill stop? That's, that's how we do it. And I think after that, it's time for a Facebook Marketplace pickup. So uh, why don't you come along with me and see what we're going to get? So we're heading about 40 minutes south of Milwaukee down to Racine. Uh, I wanted to check out a Nintendo 64 that I found on Facebook Marketplace. But first I needed to make a quick stop in Sturdevant, Wisconsin. Um, I just wanted to mail a video game that I sold on eBay. So I stopped at this little post office and mailed my game. The postal worker was super nice and uh, it was overall just a really good time. And I can't say that there is too much else going on here in Sturdevant, but uh, they did have a Blaine's Farm and Fleet, which is cool. That's a great store if you need some like Carhartt gear or hand warmers or something, but it's the middle of summer, so we're going to Walmart to do this Facebook Marketplace pickup. Uh, I got $90 right here that we're going to be using to buy uh, this Nintendo 64 lot. So let's see what we're picking up. This is my favorite part about Facebook Marketplace is uh, driving 40 minutes to meet with someone and you have no idea if they're actually going to show up or not. Pretty cool, pretty fun. Uh, I'm here on time, other dude isn't here yet, I haven't heard from him in a few minutes. Oh, he says he's coming, so should be good. Alright, and here's the haul. Uh, this may not seem like an amazing deal at first, but I did have a reason for doing this, which we'll get to in a second. So first of all, it came with this generic retro bit controller in green. Uh, I pretty much have no reason to keep that. Um, and then there were a few games with it as well. So we got uh, Castlevania, a um, little beat up, but you know, it's still a Castlevania game. So that's, that's really cool as far as I'm concerned. And then we also had a copy of Dark Rift, um, a 3D fighting game for the N64. I don't think it's a great game. I tried it out and it was pretty, pretty messy, but it's still a pretty cool pickup. Um, and then we also had a copy of San Francisco Rush Extreme Racing. Uh, I remember playing this arcade cabinet at Walmart when I was a kid, and that was really fun, so that's cool. And last but not least, a uh, Japanese version of Pokemon Stadium with no back. Um, yeah, so those were the games that came with the bundle. And I'm going to show you why I actually drove 40 minutes to get this. It was pretty much just because I saw that this N64 came with the memory expansion card. Um, 
kind of a lame reason to really want this lot, but these cards are like $60 on eBay right now, and I, I really wanted one to play uh, Perfect Dark on my N64, and I didn't want to pay full price, so I figured like I can drive 40 minutes to get this lot, and then I can take the card out and probably sell the whole lot for most of what I paid for it. So that was kind of my game plan uh, with, with getting this stuff. So with my new plastic bag filled with N64 goodies in tow, I made my way back home to Milwaukee. All right, we're back in the apartment. Uh, got a new plastic bag for the cat that all my N64 stuff came in. He seems to like it. So, you know, even if the N64 doesn't work, at least we got a good bag for the cat. Uh, but yeah, I think it's time to try out some of these games that we got uh, during this video. So uh, let's see what we got here. So yeah, this is Jack 3, which I picked up at Mega Media Exchange here in Milwaukee. Um, I really love the first two Jack games, and I've never played this one, so it's just something that I've really been wanting to check out for a while. And I'm not super familiar with it, but I know that it has like kind of a more vehicle-oriented like racing aspect to it, so that sounds really cool to me. And I also really love games that are set in the desert. Uh, don't ask me why, I just think it's a really cool setting for a video game, so I'm excited to see that that's what this game does. So we're playing on my 13-inch uh, Prison CRT TV right here. Uh, definitely not the best display for capturing gameplay, but I just think it it looks cool. So uh, whatever, that's that's what we're doing. Um, and right off the bat, I'm I'm remembering uh, that I'm just not very good at, th at 3D platformers. Um, it's uh, it's a genre that I really appreciate, but it's one that I'm just like like I never beat Super Mario 64. I'm just like not that good at these games, even though I like them a lot. Um, so yeah, you can tell I'm just dying a lot here, right in this starter area. But yeah, these Jack games, they just still feel so good to play. The controls are really tight, and the frame rate is super smooth. Um, and like I said, I'm just loving this desert setting. It's, it's just really beautiful and cool. And uh, I'm definitely really excited to dive into this game a little more and see more of the vehicle stuff, because, I mean, if it controls half as well as the platforming, it's probably some pretty fun uh, racing. All right, and here's Persona 4 Arena. This is a game I've really wanted to play for a long time. Um, and you know what? I'm just going to be honest. Fighting games aren't my genre. I know I said the same thing about 3D platformers, and you're all starting to think that I'm a fake gamer. But, um, you know, I, I just haven't really played a lot of fighting games. They were never really my thing. I was more into, like, role-playing games and first-person shooters and racing games, stuff like that. Uh, but you know what? I love Persona 4, so I cannot resist playing something like this, where it has all of the characters from Persona 4 that you know and love, and it's just wrapped up into this really, really awesomely made fighting game package. And like I said, I'm not an expert on fighting games, but from what I've played of this, it seems pretty freaking sweet. Um, what really stands out to me the most are just the animations. This game looks so good. Um, it's so colorful and vibrant and just like the animations of the characters are amazing I, I think this like specific art style in fighting games like looks so good and ages so much better than almost like Any other kind of graphical style out there And this game also features a fully fleshed out uh, visual novel style story mode um, And it's actually canonical and it ties in with the story of Persona 4 and I just think it's so cool that, like, Atlas, with these kind of side games, they go that extra mile to, like, have a story mode where it's canonical. Like, they do the same thing with um, Persona 4 Dancing All Night. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think that's, like, that's so cool. And if you're a p fan of Persona 4, like, this definitely seems like something that you'd want to play, even if you're not that into fighting games. So it's just, like, it's kind of a good way to have that tie in and also, like, maybe introduce people to new genres with these kind of side games. All right, and here's the money shot of my haul. Uh, you know, nothing that impressive, but just a few things that I liked that I wanted to pick up. Uh, and I spent $123 total on this stuff. 
Um, and 90 of that was on the N64, which I ended up selling everything in that lot except for the ex expansion pack. I sold for $80. So in my head, I only spent $10 for the expansion pack, which I feel okay about, even though I had to drive 40 minutes there and 40 minutes back. I don't know. To me, it was worth it because it was just a fun day of driving to get some N64 stuff. I don't know. It was a good time, and now I have an expansion pack. And I didn't take any footage of the N64 working with the expansion pack, but it does work. Uh, so now I can play Perfect Dark and Donkey Kong and all those cool N64 games that require the expansion pack. Um, so yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Um, be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more because I'm definitely going to be around buying more video games and making videos about it. So we'll see you soon.